Hey everyone, let's go over some exciting updates to SETI Astro Suite and Cosmic Clarity. Welcome to SETI Astro. There's a lot of great updates in SETI Astro Suite and some really good like under the hood stuff for Cosmic Clarity. So let's go over that. One of the main requests now on SETI Astro Suite, there's a themes. You can click it and switch the whole thing to a dark theme. I know a lot of people were uh, looking forward to that since I had it on my what's in my image as a standalone. This applies it to the, to the whole thing. So you could have a light or a dark theme. First main update here is in the XISF Liberator. There's a batch process. Uh, I, I didn't include this at the start, but we could do it now. You can click batch process, select your input folder. I just have one here with a bunch of XISFs in it, an output folder. You can select your format type you want to convert them to. So I'll just go to fits and then start the batch process. You can see them processing there and it'll tell you when it's complete. Here was all the XISFs I had converted. And the great thing is if the XISF does have fits header data, that header data is going to be preserved into the, the fits now from the XISF. So here, load it the fits converted file and it has all our astrometric data that it needed. We'll look at cosmic clarity sharpening and denoise in a second, but I've added cosmic clarity satellite. So you could have your input and output folders or just process a single image if you have a satellite image in a trail you want to uh, remove. I've updated the detection model. It's a lot more sensitive to dimmer trails and I'm going to be spending the next uh, week actually training the satellites and some of the cosmic clarity stuff too. But let's go ahead and select an input folder. You can select an output folder or make it the, the same folder. It really doesn't matter. And on the right hand side, you're going to see a list of all the files it found in both those folders for you. You can do some, you can do some things with this here. If you right click it, you could actually delete the file or rename it. So if you have just a, just a really bad file when you're looking at it, um, maybe your guiding was really off, a plane's flying through it, all sorts of stuff. You could just delete it straight from here. Or the other really nice thing is if you double click it, it's going to open that file for you. So you can go ahead and zoom out. You can scroll around. It does have an auto stretch. Now these tree boxes over on the right do monitor in real time. So here's the output folder I had. If I go ahead and delete everything in that output folder, it'll clear it out over here too. So it is a real time monitor. It has all the other normal options. You could have the option for your GPU acceleration, whether you just want a, a full or a luminance. Uh, there's the clip the satellite trail to zero, which is perfect if you're going to be stacking these images later. I also have now added a skip save if no satellite trail is detected. So that way it just doesn't duplicate all your images and you can actually look at the images it did detect trails on. The last thing here is the wrench down here. Be sure to click the wrench and tell it where you have the where you have the cosmic clarity suite load it to so it can call it correctly. So let's just go ahead. Uh, I, I did load up some other files in here as well. And we can tell it uh, we want to skip and we're going to batch process the input folder. It should go ahead and call the Cosmic Clarity Suite, the satellite removal program. And that comes up in the background, but also a extra little dialogue here does pop up so you don't have to monitor the terminal. And it's gonna go through and it has a progress bar for you and it's going to start processing all the files in the particular folder. You could also set it on a live monitor. That way, if new files come into that folder, it'll just process that one. If you do end the process or the, the process finishes, you just get a little window here that the batch processing was done. But we can go ahead and, and do the live monitor as well. And again, it's going to start satellite in the background and you're gonna get a little uh, progress monitor that live monitor started. 
What's really great about live monitoring from here is nothing here is froze. You could still do the entire suite while it's monitoring in the background for you. We can see it detected a new image file. It'll go ahead and process that one. And then to stop live monitoring, you just exit out. And it'll say live monitoring stopped. And again, you can go ahead and double click any of these. And you can do a, a preview of the file within here. And again, it has the auto stretch feature in there. So you could see what your satellite file looks like. And then for uh, process a single image, you can just select a single image. And it's just gonna go ahead and it actually makes a temporary folder in the background, processes that folder and resaves the image for you. And that's where the file was saved too. It'll save it in the same directory that that file was. So lots of updates with Cosmic Clarity Satellite. Now let's go take a look at Cosmic Clarity version six. You can access it via just standalone or through SETI Astro Suite, or I'm gonna do it from uh, the script in PixInsight. We'll go ahead and start with Sharpen. Couple things under the hood. I've completely redone the Stellar training data, uh, and I'm currently redoing all the non-Stellar as well. So for the Stellar, uh, the training data has now been normalized in all the same way that Cosmic Clarity itself does the normalization prior to the entry into the neural net. There is a lot to do with metadata recovery from the original XISF files to the output XISF files, or if you're using those particular ones, there was some metadata that was being missed in the FITS file around Bayering. And the normalization method is now much more robust as well for the linear data. It's, uh, it's just a much better program under the hood all around. Like I said, the Stellar model has now been updated. It handles aberrations a heck of a lot better. I feel that Blur Exterminator is still the, still the gold standard with Stellar aberrations. It just, it just does some magic, but to get rid of corner aberrations and things like that, it, it does so much better of a job now uh, in this full version six with the, the fully revamped Stellar Sharpening that I'm, I'm really excited about it. So let's go ahead, we'll test uh, Stellar Sharpening here on this part of the Flaming Star Nebula. And I wouldn't recommend a 0.9, that's really strong now. Uh, but you know, you may want to experiment around. For, for this, I, I might as well just show it at, at a full 0.9. Be sure to use the wrench to tell it where the Cosmic Clarity Suite is. Uh, both PixInsight Script and SETI Astro Suite requires the wrench icon to tell it where the Cosmic Clarity Suite actually is. And you should be able to see it as version six right now. The other thing we'll look at in a second is the denoising. I've completely retrained the denoise as well, and it provides a much smoother final denoise result over the previous model. So, so quite the big improvements here with stellar sharpening and denoise. And very soon, probably late this week, I'll be putting out the non-stellar updated models as well. All right, the favorite thing we like doing is zooming right up into the corners. So this is the before after, before, after, before, after, and actually on my Newtonian, I think the aberrations, for whatever reason, are probably strongest, kind of in the middle. And I, I don't necessarily know if that's a collimation thing or, or what yet, but Here's the before, there's some elongation to them. And after, nice round stars. Again, before. And after. The other thing that uh, the previous model did is it 
kind of messed up to the diffraction spikes. So here's the before and after. So now it didn't uh, make that like beat it pattern or anything on the on the diffraction spike. So stellar sharpening much, much improved here. And I do want to show um, it handling some stronger aberrations than on my newt. So here's my acromat and it has, um, I don't know, they look like little crosses in the corners. So let's go ahead and run stellar sharpening on this. All right, let's zoom in here to the corner. So this is the before and after. Does a much better job at circularizing them. Still not perfect, not to blur X level quite yet. They're on AI model four right now. This is really, this is really model two for me, but I think we're getting there. This is in the other corner before, after. all the way to the left, before, after. And then I, I think these are the worst ones in the lower right, uh, very bright, heavy crosses, before and after. So I'm really excited about the improvements to the stellar sharpening here with this. And now let's go ahead and fire up uh, Denoise. Again, Denoise version 6 with the updated Denoise model. And noise is hard to see on YouTube, so I'm, I'm like really zoomed in. You can even see the pixels. So here's before and after. Before and after. So hopefully that comes through on uh, YouTube. Like I said, it's noise is one of those things that's hard to hard to show up because of their algorithm. Here's before and after. So a lot of big updates here. SETI Astro Suite. Cosmic Clarity Suite, be sure to get the updated versions, and of course I'll let everybody know when the non-stellar models are updated, and I'll re-put out Cosmic Clarity Suite at that time too. Probably do a little video on that as well, showing all the different sharpening with Cosmic Clarity Suite. Well, I hope you guys get a lot of good use out of all this work. Um, it was may not, may not seem like a, a bunch of changes, but really was a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Uh, to, to get all this going and get it to where it is right now. So I hope everybody uh, gets a lot of great use out of it. Please comment, like, and subscribe.